There you go. Now take it off. Take it all off. Hey folks, Zoobs here with another video. And today we're gonna to be working on a Fox Nude DPS Evol rear shock. So this particular shock is a Nude 4 and it's made for Scott bikes. Now Scott has that dual chamber system over here that sort of allows you to on the fly control travel. You can sort of limit your travel, all right? So because of that, there are some minor details that would be different than a regular DPS shock. And we will get into that when we take this whole thing apart, okay? But outside of that, it's a regular DPS shock, not all that much difference. So the job isn't all that complex. You just have to pay attention to certain details. All right. So with that being said, let's go into the parts needed and the tools needed in order to get this job done. Okay, so for parts needed, this is a Fox Nude Shock. Very similar to a DPS, but there are some significant differences. So it has its own internal damper seal kit, 8030867. This is a Nude 4, by the way. So other nudes, like a Nude 2, 3, might need a different kit. I'm not sure. You definitely have to verify that with Fox, all right? This one has the springs inside and a whole bunch of other little details that we're going to need to fully service this shock. Now, the air sleeve kit, or the air can kit, is very similar to a DPS. It technically has its own part number two, which is 8030135252. I don't have that right now. I got 8030142, which is your standard kit. I actually looked up the, the inner diameters and the outer diameters of the seals, at least the wipers and uh, the inner uh, 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 quad rings, and they match. So I'm sure I could use this. This is not going to be an issue. Again, this is very similar. The bore is the same as a regular DPS. Um, pretty much everything in the damper side is the same for the most part. Uh, the only As a DPS, the only difference is on the top part, they have that dual chamber system. Okay, we are going to need a little bit of either SRAM butter or slick oleum, whatever your slick honey, whatever your preference is, just to protect the seals. Regular waterproof grease for the remote and the spring. Okay, so we definitely need that to when we work on the dials um, and for the spring on the inside, okay? As far as oil in the damper, 10W8 green. Red doesn't exist anymore, it is now green. We're gonna need paper towels and we're gonna need alcohol to clean stuff up, okay? On to the tools. Out of all these tools that you see here, once again, the most important tool, safety glasses. And I'm not kidding, particularly for this needle over here when it comes to filling up the shock. I'll explain that later, right? So safety glasses. Now, you are gonna need a vise. This job is gonna be very difficult without a vise. I highly recommend you don't do it without a vise. So with a vise, you're gonna need soft jaws. I'm gonna try it with my, uh, my uh, printed soft jaws over here, right? These uh, nylon soft jaws, whatever they're, poly soft jaws actually, because uh, these reflect a lot So uh, on the camera. So if these don't work out for me, I'll just revert back to these, right? the metal ones, but you will need flat face soft jaws and a soft jaw with a nine millimeter shaft hold. Okay, so that's, you're gonna need that. Strap wrench, to take off the air can, you might need a strap wrench, you might not, all depends on how tight it is, all right? So you will need picks, very handy picks for working on shocks and forks is this flat faced uh, wide pick, basically. It really helps in many situations to put really tight odd position O-rings in, right? Or seals in. So outside of that, you just need standard pick. So then we have to take out the Delrin ball. Take out the Delrin ball, you could either use a pick, which could end up being a major pain in the butt, or you grab a very small drill bit, one that will fit a pick tip basically, and drill a hole a few millimeters deep in order to be able to scoop out the Delrin ball, okay? So from that point on, we need to take out the pellet screw. You need a 530 seconds to take out the pellet screw, okay? This is a modified 530 seconds I'll talk about it a little bit later. Then we need to take out the bleed screw. You're gonna need a 564th, Alan, to take out the bleed screw. When we take out the bleed screw, we need to take out the bearing inside the bleed hole, right? So you're gonna need a magnet for that. So then we separate the bottom half of the shock, the damper body from the top half. We're gonna need either a three quarter inch or a 19 millimeter wrench. And later on, when we put it back together, you're gonna need a 19 millimeter wrench in order to be able to torque it down, right? Or a three quarter inch crow's foot, not wrench, sorry, to torque it down, right? Once we separate the bottom half, you're gonna need somewhere to put the oil. Then 
uh, we're going to work on the IFP first and set it. You need a, either you could do this with either a caliper or an IFP depth tool. I like Fox's tool. I think that's a really good tool. Uh, so I'm going to use my IFP depth tool, but you could do it with a caliper. It's just a bit more of a pain in the butt. So at that point, we're going to take out the shim stack and to take out the shim stack, we're going to need two Fox tools. One of them is this three nipple tool, nipple, um, to take off the plate. And then, um, we're going to need this special spanner, basically, or Allen to, or, 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 or hex uh, socket in order to be able to take out the piston stack itself. This is a very thin edge, very hard to find. Uh, so if you happen to have one that works, I mean, it might work. I don't know. It's hard to find these. So you're going to need a ratchet for those two tools. Now take out the shim stack. I never take shim stacks out without a cable tie in order to keep things in order, right? So from that point on, we're gonna separate the top half of the shock from the shaft on the inside. This is a trunnion mount. We are going to need a trunnion mount tool. Fox sells these, very expensive. You could go to eBay, buy them online for less than half the price, and they work just as well. This one is actually super well made. Tolerances are great on this. So um, from that point on, we're gonna work on, we're gonna remove the, um, actually, before we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to work on the inner shaft first. To take out the seals in the inner shafts, we need a pin, basically, preferably one a little bit longer. One and a half inch would be great. This one's a little bit too short. It's all I can find right now. Um, but solid. Make sure it's not a floppy pin. Make sure it's a really solid pin to be able to go in there and pop out the, the seals inside the lifting plate shafts. So, um... Now we're going to work on the remotes, the dial. This is a remote type dial, basically. So we're going to need a one and a half millimeter to, to loosen the bolt to remove the compression dial. And then we need a two and a half millimeter Allen in order to remove the whole remote mechanism. So once that's done, we're going to go into the top of the head. We are going to remove a little plate that adjusts the travel on the top half of the shock, basically. You're going to need a needle nose plier. Then after we work on everything there, we're gonna need a, well, you don't need this. It's just gonna make your life a lot easier. You don't need it, but I'll explain later when we get to that part, a retaining clip plier in order to set the compression knob to the proper tension, okay? There's something you need, there's a little detail you need to look at when finishing that the remote up, right? So then after that, we're gonna have to seal the top half of the shock to the shaft again. We're gonna need Loctite 277, 271 would work. So, and then, we're going to be assembling everything. Again, we're going to have to go back to the 19-inch crow foot after we assemble the whole shim stack and everything. Uh, close the body uh, to the, the damper body to the top half of the shock. And then we have to fill up the IFP chamber. Now, two options here. One, you could go, you could either buy this Fox tool, right? Tool comes by itself, and then you just go buy a little screw, cost a few cents to uh, put it in as long as you want, whatever length you want, right? Um, you can make this if you think you can make it. In fact, somebody had uh, commented that he made his own and it worked out really good. More power to him, man. Outstanding job. Um, or you could use a 530 seconds or a four millimeter. They're pretty close to each other, I think. Now, I had originally cut a groove on this side over here in order to be able to slot in the needle. But even better, if you have a long and short-sided uh, Allen, try and cut the groove all the way down here. So this way you could just put the needle straight in down the middle, it'll go into the, into the, uh, the, um, the pellet, fill up the chamber with air, and then you can screw it down and pull it out, right? It's just gonna be a little bit easier. I should have thought of that before, uh, but you can do that. This is an alternative solution and it will work. I have used it in the past, right? But I got my little tool over here, so I'm just gonna use my tool. From there, we're gonna need a high pressure shock pump. Can't use a regular shock pump. It's gotta be a high pressure shock pump, right? Cause we're gonna go up to like 500 PSI in this one, I think. So uh, this is a nude. I gotta double check that actually. So, uh, and that's pretty much it for the tools guys. So let's take apart a shock. Before we work on the shock, one thing you really wanna do is make sure that it is clean, okay? So just check all little like small areas, make sure that there's no dirt in them or some kind of mud buildup, right? You do not want any kind of debris going on to the, into the inside of this shock, all right? So for starters, what we are gonna do is we're gonna take down the existing air pressure and rebound adjustment and write that down. So first thing I'm gonna do is unscrew the cap. I am gonna grab my shock pump. And 
this thing is measuring about 260 PSI. Yep, 270 PSI. So we lose a little bit, but at least we have a decent idea of where we're at from the get-go, right? So I'm going to write that down to 270. And then I'm going to take out the air very slowly. All right. So very, very slowly, as slow as you can. So it could equally take out from both chambers. All right. That is done. Now let's click the rebounds to the fully open position, which is counterclockwise. All right. So, wow, that seems really high for rebound. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve. Twelve clicks of rebound. Cool. Now let's take off the sag ring. We're going to set this on the side. Next, we take out the air can. Now, if you could do it by hand, you might need a nudge uh, with a strap wrench. I don't put them down all that tight. Let's see if this one is up oh, there we go so it just loosened it and let's take out the air can now before we fully take it out let's put in a bit of towel i should have taken out these things first great that's not gonna fit let's see if this one will fit this is just for protection in case. Oh, there you go. That came out. Let's leave that on the side. Ultimately, I should have mentioned to take these guys out because we're going to need to take them out anyway. So let me just leave them on the side for now. Take off the air can. There might be a pop, possibly. That's why we have this here, just in case it pops out because of air that we missed. All right, see, there was a pop actually, but not a bad one because we slowly took out the air. So then we're going to take out the air can. Okay, so for now, let's just clean out the inside temporarily. And we are going to deal with this later during a 50 hour service. So right now, what we're doing would be the beginning of a 50 hour service as far as taking things apart. But then we'll service the air can and these seals uh, later near the end of the video. Okay. And we're going to take this guy and we're going to put them on the side. So if you have rubber soft jaws, then you might not have to take these plastic things out, right? But if you don't have rubber soft jaws, I would definitely take them out because there's a chance of, chance of cracking them with metal soft jaws. So these just slide out. Basically, this is just an axle that goes inside. You're just going to slide this out. This the seals for the outside. And then in here are two separate plastic rings. Uh, they're divided down the middle. So just take, a. Uh, uh, pick, find the middle split area, and then just push them out just slightly, just like that. Okay, that takes care of one. And then we take care of the other one. And now you can put them in metal soft jaws, okay? And that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to use these rubber soft jaws, see how they work. For now, they should work just fine for me. Okay, close this up. Okay, actually, yeah, these things aren't all that good for working on shocks. I'll tell you that much. So, um, now I have two options. Again, I could try and take a pick and try and wedge this guy out of here, right? But that could prove to be a pain in the butt. And that's where the drill comes in. So I'm going to take the drill and I'm going to drill, see if you can see this, a hole from the side. Be careful you don't hit your stanchions because these Belbrin balls are hard and this drill bit will want to walk in the beginning. Could you see that? Hopefully you can. Just go in there. Oops. Just go deep enough until it, you just fit a pick in there and pop him out. Just like that. All right, next we take out the air. Next, we're gonna take a little bit of paper towel. We're gonna to put in the hole. Then we're gonna take our five thirty seconds. The reason you put the paper towel is that air will come out of here and you don't wanna breathe that mist. I mean, oil 
mist will come out. So just slowly open it, slowly, until you hear air coming out. There you go, air is coming out. Slowly, 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 slowly. Slowly, slowly, slowly. And there we go. Now we can take it. And we could take out our screw. Okay. I'm going to put that on the side. Then take a pick. We have our little pellet. Push down on the side of the pellet if you can see that. And then try and lift it up, make it like so it's vertical. And then you should be able to take a pick and just pop them out. Yeah, just like that. All right, and this guy you could throw out. Next, we separate the top from the bottom. So first we have to take out our bleed screw. That's where the 564 comes in, right? So we're gonna take this out. We're gonna open it up slowly, let the air that might be in there come out slowly. Okay. So far we're doing pretty good. Oop, and it came out. Okay, let's put this on the side for now. There is a little bearing in here. Take a magnet, boom. Now what you're gonna do, so you don't lose them, take both the screw and the ball, the bearing, and leave it on the magnet and put it on the side. Okay, now we crack open the head. Now, we do not wanna apply pressure on the bleed hole, right? So if I was, for instance, to unscrew it this way, Pressure would be on this side and on this side, at the other, the opposing side. That's not good because we could crush the hole. So we want to apply or position the wrench where there's going to be the least amount of pressure. Or pressure. So if I position it this way, pressure will be on this tip and the opposing tip over here. Okay. Now this is going to be a good crack. Hopefully, I won't run into issues with that soft jaw. There we go. I mean, there is real good pressure in here. Put this guy on the side for now and get my little pan ready because there will be oil that will come out. Okay. There we go. Just lifted the piston, the cap. Now we just lifted the head and we will empty out the oil. All right, boom, done. It's actually in good shape. Cool. Next, we will work on the IFP. Before we take out the IFP, if you notice over here on this side, I had opened up the damper seal kit and I put everything in order by size, starting with the largest over here, going to the smallest on this side, all right? This will help you identify stuff a lot quicker if you do this. So for the IFP, I forgot to mention, as far as tools needed, air can. So ultimately, there's a hole over here where we fill up the IFP chamber, right? And we are going to press air. We're going to put our um, damper side down, but don't put it flat on the ground. Put about a, leave about a millimeter of space, two millimeters of space, so the IFP can come out, okay? And just apply air and done. And there's our IFP. So let's leave that on side. I could put this guy on the side for now. I don't need him. Might as well clean up this mess. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with the towel in the chamber, clean it out real well. Okay, in fact, I'm gonna grab a lint-free towel and go in there if I can with a smaller finger and clean it out real well. Okay, clean out the threads just to make sure they're clean. Pull outside, leave this guy on the side for now. So we have our IFP. Let's clean them outside first. Then we're gonna take a pick and we're going to take out the seal. All right. 
So now we have to match the seal. It's this one over here. Old seal, new seal. Now, with the seals, we're gonna use a bit of ceramic butter, any kind of shock type grease, okay? So we're just gonna take a little bit of grease just to coat it, nothing more. Okay, make sure this guy's clean. Look at that. That's not good. That's a bit of seal debris. Okay. We're going to take our seal and we're going to put them on. Boom. Done. Now we have to set our IFP within the damper body. Before we continue, one thing I forgot to mention. When it comes to oil, guys, dispose of it properly, right? Don't throw it down the drain. Don't pour it in a toilet. Don't put it in our water system. This stuff is nasty as hell, right? Just put it in a bottle, give it to your local bike shop, give it to a local uh, auto type dealer uh, or parts dealer basically, and they'll know how to dispose of this appropriately, okay? So now let's work on the IFP. So before we put the IFP in, we need to prep the damper body. And what we're gonna do is take a little bit of grease and we're just gonna coat the inside of the damper body, okay? Just like that, just a little bit of grease. You don't have to put too much in here. Then we're gonna take our piston. You have a flat side and essentially a concave side. Flat side goes in, concave side sticks out, okay? So just pop it in a little bit, okay? So then you have two options. You could use a caliper to put the IFP in by just sinking it in, okay? Or you could use an IFP tool that does the exact same thing. I'm gonna use my IFP tool. Now what I do is I double check the tool to make sure it's appropriate at the appropriate depth. In this case, this is a 45 millimeter shock, so I need 54.61 millimeters. You have to make sure both ends touch. And in this case, I'm touching, so I am exact 54.61 millimeters. All right, so then all I have to do is take my tool, sink it in, and I'm done. The IFP is set, okay? And we could put this body on the side. We won't need it until the end or near the end. Okay, next up, we remove the shim stack. To remove the shim stack, first we have to remove the lifting plate. The lifting plate, so this is different than a regular DPS lifting plate. In fact, I think this is a crappy design. Um, it's sort of like a butterfly plate. Um, lift it straight up, grabbing just the ends. It's gonna be a little bit stiff because it's sitting on a seal, so just lift it straight up just like that. Okay, and we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it on the side, all right? Now we have to remove the piston itself, right? Make sure this thing stays on. This is a pin that keeps the lifting plate in its position. Bad idea, my opinion, just my opinion. These do fall out, so which is not a good thing, right? So just make sure that's in there. So next we will take our three nipple tool basically and put them in, loosen, counterclockwise, all right, and do pull them out by hand, or unthread them by hand. Now be careful underneath because shims could get stuck under here. In this case, they didn't, all right? We're gonna take this guy, we're gonna put him down. We're done with this tool for now. So now we grab this tool, the spanner over here, or the spanner, the um, socket. Okay, these are shims, be careful with them. We're just gonna take this guy, uh, I hate this thing. Loosen him, we're just gonna loosen him, just like that, okay? And then we're gonna take our tie wrap, we're gonna put it inside down the hole. Oop, this tie wrap's pretty big. Try and get a thinner tie wrap than what I have right now. That's not all that good. Unscrew him until you can lift it, the whole mechanism. All right, so then we're gonna grab the whole assembly from the bottom, make sure the tire wrap's gone through, which it has. Now we're on tire. The only thing is the tire wrap is a little bit too big, huh? Look at that. When all that happened to me. Okay, well, he's jammed in there, so he's not going anywhere for now, but there we go. Okay, so this is our shim assembly. Look at your shims, make sure that there's nothing wrong with them, there's no cracks in them, or some of them aren't cracked, or you know, there's no issues with them. You, with the tie wrap in there now, you can sort of like uh, 
separate things and just take a look inside. Not that many shims in this design at all. So we're looking good. We're going to take this guy. We're going to close him up. Make sure he's clicked in there. And we're just going to leave him on the side. All right. So now we're going to take off the piston head. Okay. Leave him on the side. We're going to take off our bumper. Leave him on the side. Then there's going to be a little washer here that might be a little bit tricky to take out because of this is that mechanism that Scott uses to limit travel on the fly. So just grab this washer on both sides with a pick. If you can, just be careful and just lift them straight up. We're going to put him on the side. Keep everything in order. All right. Now, next, we will remove this mechanism over here. To remove this chamber in here, there is a C-clip right here. Okay, you're going to need two picks to separate these apart. Now, you have a squared side and a edge or an angled side. Angle, angled side helps you remove. All right, so this might be a little bit tricky because it really is small and pretty stiff. Basically... Just to, actually, this is the angle side here. So just go underneath just like that. What I just did right there. Done. All right. Take him. Put him on the side. Now, we should be able to remove this chamber here. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention. There is a wave washer in here. Grab a flat pick like this. Try and grab him underneath. Might be a little bit tricky because he's going to want to slide around. Two picks will definitely come in handy. Where's the edge? I can't see the edge. There's one edge. There's the other edge. All right, just like that. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. It's a wave washer. A really wavy washer. There we go. And boom. We're going to take him, we're going to put him on the side. That is normal. This is a very wavy washer. So, now we should be able to remove this guy. All right, come on. Might be a little bit stiff in there. Grab him underneath and pop him straight up. There we go. Okay. There goes that guy. All right. Now all we have left is this lifting rod. For the lifting rod, we're going to grab a needle nose plier, grab onto him, and pull him straight up. So all this is unique to this particular shock. Now if you notice with the lifting plier, you have a beveled side and a sort of like a bullet type side, okay? So that'll come in handy later. So now we have this little barrel over here. We're going to take him out, okay? And just try and get underneath him and pull him out just like that. And there is a seal in here that we're going to have to change. It's going to be a little challenging. In fact, in our kit, we get a new one of these guys as well. So we're going to change him out when the time comes. So next, let's try and take out the seal. There's a seal on the inside. Grab your pick and just scoop him out. All right. Let's leave him next to this guy to remind us to put him back in. Well, to replace him and put him back in. So this guy is empty now. Next, we separate the shaft from the head. But before we do that, let's replace all the seals that we can replace here to do this ahead of time so we don't have to do it later. Before separating the shaft from the head, let's clean all this stuff up, replace whatever seals we can, right? So we're gonna start from the bottom up. So the first seal we're going to replace is this guy here. And if we put him next to our pile of seals, we know he is this guy right here. So that's the new one. That's the old one. Put the new one right in his spot. Next, we got this compression cap, basically. He has a seal on the side, and he has a seal on the inside. Okay? So we're going to take the seal out first. We're going to find his match. This match has to be this guy over here. Yes, it is. Okay, that's the old one. Then we're going to take out the 
inner one. All right, let's put them on the side and find his match, and that has to be this one here. All right, so then we're going to apply a little bit of grease on each one. Again, this is just to protect it. Stuff this guy in. He should be easy. Should be all that bad. There you go. You just slip right in. Then we're going to take a little bit of grease. Place this guy here. And he should be just as easy. Done. These guys here, we could just give them a little quick cleaning. Take out any old grease or oil. All right? We don't have to worry about that. Here's a washer. Clean him up. We don't have a replacement for this. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. We do have a replacement for this guy here. Okay, so that little barrel goes on the side and this little barrel heel here will replace him. Which is pretty odd. I wonder why. Does he have a seal on the inside? No, well, he doesn't. Anyway, surprised they actually offer that. And we're going to put a little bit of grease on this little seal here just to prep him. All right, again, to protect him. And put him on the side. Anyway, get off of me. Get off of me. Yeah. All right. Next, we have our inner air cam piston. Now, the outside, we're not going to change now. This is part of the 50-hour service, but we are going to change this seal over here and this seal in here. Okay, so first, let's take this guy out. Put him here, and then we'll take this guy out. Be careful with this guy. Give him a good stab. He's a little bit stiff. Actually, this might help out. There we go. Oop, had him. Come on. Come on. He is a stiff seal. Okay, let's do it this way. Try and poke him. Just like that. He's a really stiff seal. Come on. There we go. All right. Pull him out. And out. Okay. Leave him there. So we find his replacement. His replacement is right there. So that's the old one. That's the new one. And this guy over here is pretty evident. It's this only white one over here. Okay, so we will start off with putting in the white one, put grease on him. And to make your life easier, what we're going to do is we're going to put some grease on the inside where he sits. He sits right on the top over here, right? In order for him to stick when we put him in. So. Okay, we're going to take them, we're going to squish them in just like this. He's a stiff seal, so, okay. Then we're going to try and put him into his seat just like that, okay. And then just force upwards with your finger at the bottom, okay. And you should be able to basically just pop him in, if not. That's where these little picks come in handy. Boom, he is in. Grab the flat pick, that's just grease. Go around, make sure he is in there good. All right, had a camera overheat over there. So like I said, we're gonna take a little bit of grease and put him on this guy. And then we are going to slide him into his seat. And this guy should go in pretty easy. Right into that seat over there and just stick the rest of them in. There we go. Make sure he's in there good. Nope, see, it's deceiving. Make sure he's in there good. So, because sometimes he'll be popping up on one side and then he flattens down and pops up on another side. But right now we are good. This guy is all done. As far as the rest, we're going to deal with this Teflon seal later. All right. Next up, we take apart the head. So next up, we separate the shaft from the head, right? In order to do that, we have to install our trunnion mount adapter uh, in order so we could unscrew the head from the shaft, right? Now, make sure that you clean this shaft of all grease. Even inside metal soft jaws, and, and, and printed soft jaws or poly soft jaws will not work for this. I'm telling you, you're going to have to really clamp them down and they'll slide. 
So nine millimeter, if you have aluminum soft jaws, even better. So you could try it with polys. I've tried it and it slips. So uh, what I also forgot to mention in the tools needed is we need heat. This is just a regular uh, butane torch. So we're gonna have to apply heat right in here, in this area here. There is Loctite Red that is holding it all down, right? So we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna put him in the shaft and we're gonna lock him in there real tight, real tight. Okay, don't crush him. Then we're gonna take our ratchet, prep him. Okay, make sure he's in a counterclockwise unscrew position. Then we're gonna take some heat, and like I said, we're only applying for a few seconds. Right, just apply them all the way around just like that. And that should be it. And there we go. He has loosened. Should be able to do it by hand now. And I can take off the trunnion mount. Oh, wow, this size it here. And this guy side and the whole head should come out. Ta-da, there we go. Now, if we notice, the bearing points to the front of the shock head. That's very important for later. We'll go over that later. All right. Next, we will work on the seals inside the shaft before we remove the remote mechanism and work on the remote mechanism and change the spring. First step, let's clean any Loctite residue off the threads. Make sure you get all the Loctite off the threads. Do it now. Okay, see what I mean? So then we're gonna take the shaft from the inside and we're gonna pull it out. Okay, now in here and in here are two very small seals. This is probably the trickiest part of this entire job. And that's for all these inline shocks is changing out those seals, okay? Not hard, there is a bit of a trick and we are gonna go through it to make sure that you guys understand it, all right? So I'm just cleaning out whatever I can for now. Whatever grease is in there. Okay, so let's start off with this guy here. Right around here, there's a seal and he's in a seat. Above him is a shelf, okay? He's right underneath that shelf. So what we wanna do is grab a needle, like I said, a little longer and a bit harder needle will work out a little bit better and stab the O-ring or the seal and just push him out of his seat. Just like, oop, did I have him? Yes, I did. There we go. So if you notice, I don't know if you can see it in camera, I just pushed him out of his seat, okay? Now what I'm gonna do, take my, actually take this guy here, see if I can push him out the other side. Yes, I can. There he is. He's coming out, sort of jammed in there. Anyway. Be careful with the bearing on top over here that he doesn't pop out, right? But he should be low enough where I could get him out now. So actually I should be able to do it with pick. Anyway. 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 There we go. Put him on the side. He is done. Now we grab this guy here. Now this seal is right at the top. Okay. He is literally right at the top in here. And we're going to take him and do the same thing. He should come out a little bit easier. In fact, I already got him out. Okay. If you get him out, push him down, take him out the other side. So if you notice he's down, he's vertical now. Now we can grab our lifting plate shaft and he should come out the other side right there. Bing. All right. I got the lifting plate shaft, put them on the side, and that's our two seals. So we're gonna take them, match them. That's obviously this guy here, old one, and the new one, and this guy here, 
is definitely this guy over here. Old one and new one. Now we will put him in. And again, there's a trick over here, so I'll try and explain it best I can for you guys, all right? Let's start with the more challenging one. So again, what we have here is a shaft that has a seat for a seal right there. Above it, there's a shelf. You do not want the seal to sit on the shelf. So the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna take the seal, we're gonna vertically install it until it just goes past the shelf. And then we're gonna take our pick, grab it on one side and roll it into the seat. And then we grab our shaft over here and tuck the rest of it into the seat, okay? Now, to do this, a pointy pick isn't gonna help all that much. You need something with a flat end, okay? This is a skewer, basically, a small one. A flat end will help you take that, um, that seal past that shelf, all right? So we're gonna take a little bit of grease, we're gonna put on the seal, okay? Then we're gonna take the seal, we're gonna squish it and put it inside and make sure it's sitting vertically just like that, okay? Then we'll take something with a flat edge. Ideally, something that had a, 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 a two-forked or a two-pronged fork would be perfect for this and I plan on making one. I just keep on forgetting, there we go. And I just tucked it past its shelf, on the shelf, right? So now what I can do Take this guy and basically squeeze down on him. If you notice, if I squeeze on him, I can roll him back and forth and you should feel him and see him just like that right now. He should be in his shelf. So then I can take this guy, put him on the opposing end and essentially tuck him, press him and he should pop in to, yep, there we go, done. Nope, most of it done, not the whole thing. Now he's in there. Let's make sure he doesn't pop out. Yep, and he is in his seat. So that worked out well. So that's the first one. Now the second one is basically the same thing, okay? A little bit of grease on him or shock uh, grease. Now him, he's stiffer and harder to get inside. Okay. It's a stiffer seal by far. And it's a really small hole. So with greasy gloves, it actually makes it quite a bit challenging. Okay. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on, man. There we go. I can't get in between my fingertips or my fingernails. Come on. What the? Come on, man. Look at this guy. Stubborn. Okay. Pinch, pinch. Boy, boy, is he stubborn. Jeez. There we go. Come on, get inside. Okay. I'm just going to have to do you the hard way. This guy seems pretty big for here, to be honest. Okay. If I could tuck him in with this. There we go. All right, so we got him in. Now we're gonna do the same thing. Take him, roll him up and down until you feel him hit the side right there. Then we're gonna take our lifting plate, put him on the opposing end. Careful, press straight down on him. And the lifting plate popped him in his spot. Press down the lifting plate from there. And we are good. Done. Both seals are installed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take grease. We're going to put it on this shaft here. We're going to take him. We already cleaned the threads. And we're going to put him inside. It'll be a little bit stiff, but ultimately... There we go. Sitting perfectly. This guy is done. Now let's work on the dials. Before we work on the dials, we're gonna take out the seal on the inside where the shaft was, right? So it's at the bottom, be very careful with them. 
It's actually in a really crappy spot and he could fall all the way to the other side, meaning you're gonna have to take out the remote no matter what to get him back in. Okay, there we go, just like that. Careful with him and try and edge him upwards just like that. All right, so that's the only seal left in that head. We're gonna take him and we're gonna replace him with this guy here. That is our new seal. We are gonna put him in after. So for the dials, first we need to loosen this guy here in order to uh, remove him. Now, this bolt is for the cable. This little bolt is to loosen the compression knob. And for that, we're gonna need a one and a half millimeter. We're gonna go in there and just loosen. You don't have to remove them. We're just loosening them, okay? Yep, there we go. Just pop them out and he'll unscrew out, okay? And that is our compression cap. So now we need to remove these two screws up here. That's a two and a half millimeter. All right, these should only be hand tight. Okay, take them. And screw one, it's gonna to wanna to pop out. There is a spring in there, so hold on to them with your thumb. And don't be afraid of tensioning the spring appropriately. It's actually pretty easy on this guy. So now we're gonna take off the cap, put them on the side. We're gonna take off the rebound rod that rebound, that rebound knob, that rebound knob, it's going to take out a, uh, a shaft on the inside of it. So we'll just put it like that. Now inside we have a cam and we have the spring. And what we need to do is, oh, one thing that we need to be careful. Uh, there we go. I totally forgot. Be very careful. There are two bearings where these spring holes are, right? Here's one of them. And there's the other one. Be very, very careful with these guys. Do not lose them. All right. So in fact, I'm going to put him in order over here. Okay. So now we have our two springs in here, which are real small. In fact, I'm going to use a pick for that. Careful with the springs taking them out. really really small they go with the balls okay yeah. now we have a cam in here and a spring give it a good hard tap boom there's our cam there's our spring and believe it or not it's actually very easy to put together so next what we're going to do is we're going to clean out all the loctite residue from in here then we're going to clean out the entire inside of here, okay, where the nut, where the mechanism goes into. This is all connected basically, right? So we wanna make sure that we clean out the residue and not uh, leave the residue on the top part over here, okay? So I'm gonna clean this all out so I don't put it on camera and well, I'll do it on camera, why not? So hopefully it doesn't overheat. So first thing I'm gonna do is grab one of these guys, put them in here, try and Move as much as possible. Hmm, not bad, actually. See what I mean? Outside of some residue at the bottom, they're pretty good. So make sure, again, to remove all the residue. You don't want any residue getting trapped between a seal and a wall. Okay, we're looking good. Now we're going to go in here, put a new reg. What we'll do with this guy, scrush him up, put him in all the way, grab one of these guys. Tuck them and touch the back and then roll them around and mop them up. Not bad. We're in good shape. All right. Do one like 
time. All right. We are free and clear. Good. Good, good. Now let's clean up all this stuff. So this spring we will change. We have a new spring here. Old spring goes away. Let's clean up our cam. All right. Clean up our rebound knob. Take out any dirt from around here. Less dirt, less creaks, smoother action. Okay. Clean up the cam on this side. Clean up our axle. Clean this guy up. Okay, and clean up the back of our knob. Compression up. All right. See, this thing over here is where it sits in a certain spot to actually create the tension for the spring. Clean up our spring. All right, it's one spring. And next, we're going to clean up our balls. That's one ball. The camera overheated while I was cleaning off my second ball. So now our balls are clean as well as all the other parts. Okay, so now it's time to start assembling this thing. So first things first, we're going to put in this O-ring in the middle. Okay. Uh, why? Because just in case it falls through, it'll be easier for us to get it out. A little bit of grease on it. It's in a pretty tricky spot. It's at the base down there. So we want to take it, fold it a bit, stick it down there. Okay. Then grab a pick. So one of these square picks sort of comes in handy. Make sure it doesn't fall through just like that at the bottom. You don't want it to fall through. You want it to go into its seat at the bottom. Okay. If it falls through, pick it up again. Tuck it in. Can you see that well? Hopefully you can see that well. Tuck it in, tuck it in until it finds that side over there. And tuck it into its seat. Again, it made it past its seat. Not good. Okay, now we're in the seat. Now that we're in the seat, we're going to tuck the other side and push it down until the whole thing falls into its seat. There we go. Done. Okay, fully seated. Make sure we're not. Sticking out the other side, definitely not. We are in there. Next, we put together the remote mechanism. All right, next we install the remote. We gotta assemble it, right? So before we do that, inside at the bottom, where the remote goes in, there is a hole, a little hole. That hole is where the spring goes into, and there's a nice trick to get it in there, actually, that they thought about when they engineered all this. So um, first thing we're gonna do so we're going to take our springs, put a little bit of grease on them. All right. Just like that. And we're going to pop one into this hole over here. Just like that. And the other one into the opposing hole. Just like that. Okay. So now we're going to take grease. We're going to put grease on our spring. Waterproof grease, not SRAM butter. Then we're going to take grease, we're going to put on the cam. Now on the cam, if you notice over here, on this side, there's a teardrop notch. 
on this side, there's just a hole. And that hole is where the opposing side of the spring goes into, the non-colored side, all right? So we're going to put some grease on our cam. Then we're going to take some grease, put it on this shaft. Okay, now this shaft is going to go through the rebound knob, just like that. Oop, put too much grease on there, but we'll clean that up later. Okay, and then this is a teardrop shape. There's only one way, oops, wrong way. There's only one way to install this. You will feel it basically fit in. Okay, there's no other way to install it. And then we take the non-colored side. So the red side goes inside the head and this part here goes into that hole right there. Okay. And that's our whole mechanism. So now we have to put it in. All right. And the way that's going to work is we're going to point it at about a three o'clock position. Okay. Make sure you put it in the right hole. We're going to point it at about a three o'clock position. Okay. Then we're going to, there might be a little bit stiff going in there at first. Nope, we got it in. And as we get to the end, what we're going to do is we're going to press down a little bit and we're going to turn until we feel that click. That click is the spring going into the hole on the other side. See what I mean? Not all that hard. So next, we need to put the balls, the bearings in. Be careful. Put a little bit of grease on them. Grease is going to really be your friend here. Okay. This is going to be very tricky. And then you're going to put them on top of the spring. Chances are you're going to need help with that. So just let it sit right on top of the spring, just like that. Okay. A little bit of grease on the other one. All right. And let it sit on top of the spring. Just oop, on top of the spring. Come on. Don't be stubborn. Nearly there. Make sure it sits right on top. Will not do you any good any other position. There we go, just like that, all right? This is the tricky part now. We need this shaft to go through this hole. We need to screw down this mech, this portion to these two holes over here, but we need to make sure that the bearings don't pop out of their spots, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna put him here, just like that. And then we're just gonna press straight down. All right, straight down, just like that. Okay, straight down. Make sure your bearings don't pop out. This one just about wanted to pop out. Do not let go. This one popped out. See what I mean? You got to be very, very careful with this. This is the trickiest part. Oh, now both bearings popped out. If that happens, you got to remove this piece here. And you got to put your bearings in again. Again, grease is going to be your friend here. There's one. And oh, pop on there. There you go. So they're both on. So now, round two. Ding, ding, ding. Dry your hands a little bit. So, again, this goes on like this. So this goes up like that, put that through, and then we wanna press straight down and make sure the bearings don't pop out of their spot, but press it where you can screw in the screws as fast as you can. Make sure your bearings are still there. Yes, they are. Press it down. Did they fall out? One's in there and the other one's in there. So now I'm good. I'm gonna take this guy here, grab my two and a half millimeter, screw them in. That's one. Take the other one, screw them in. Come on. And this is why I wanted to change my Allen. Come on, 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 come on. Anyway, why are you doing that? There we go. All right. No torque spikes here. This is hand tight. And I can see that one bearing still in the good position. That bearing still in the good position. This guy moves. 
and we are good. Next, we will do the compression. Before we continue, so two things actually. One, you know this thing is installed right when this cam over here, when that notch is facing about four o'clock. Okay, it's not facing a full three o'clock, it's facing a little bit less, a little bit more than three o'clock essentially. Now, before putting in the compression knob, we wanna clean all grease. Again, we don't want grease exposed or else it's just gonna do nothing more than collect dirt, okay? So now that we have a chance, let's go in here with a little bit of alcohol and clean whatever grease is showing on the outside, okay? So now testing our rebound, we get nice clicks. Turn around, clean all the grease off of there. Okay, again, you're doing yourself a favor by cleaning all the grease off every, off every area here, or every surface, I should say, area. Okay, so now, again, we have that notch, right? Now, we're not using this screw we're using this little one on the inside. And basically we need to line up that little one. And if you notice over here, there is essentially like a lip, okay? And we need the lip to be on this side over here, okay? So we're gonna take, if everything was installed right, if you notice, right now I'm pretty much aligned. Well, if I get them in there, okay? And yet we're aligned pretty much on the other side as well. So I'm gonna take the one and a half and I'm not gonna tie him down super hard yet because I need to move him. I'm gonna tie him down a little bit so he doesn't come out that easy. There we go. Now I'm gonna take my snap ring pliers and I'm gonna turn him counterclockwise until he falls on this side in here. And that will give us our tension. Just like that and boom. Now we got loads of tension. Now we're going to take this guy and we're going to tie him down tight. Finger tight. Don't go too crazy on him. What's going on? Could I even reach in there? Yep. There we go. All right. And now we can test him. Oh, I need two millimeters. So the cable to lock him is going to pull him clockwise, right? So I could test him and he should spring back. There we go. Boom. And I have actually quite a bit of tension. It's nice. That's lockout. That's mid and that's all the way open. Our remote is completely done, fully functional and everything working as it should. All right. Now let's put on the shaft. So before we install the shaft, we're going to do two things. One, I knew I forgot something. Uh, when I took out the O-ring on the inside, there's also an O-ring out here. And I completely forgot to do it, but not too late, right? Better late than never, I guess. And that one is right here. So we're going to replace this one. And I probably burnt it when I threw the fire at it, but don't matter. We're replacing it. And this is its replacement. So we're going to put a little bit of grease on this guy. And that takes care of our forgotten O-ring. Just be careful putting him in. Sometimes he gets stubborn, flops around a lot. The seat is at the bottom. There we go, oh, nearly there. All right, and we are in, okay? So next, we're gonna put in the seal and the barrel and the pin in this guy before we close him up, since it could be a little bit easier, okay? Now, this seal, we have to make sure that he is sitting at the bottom. Oh yeah. Man, I gotta admit, this guy works pretty good. And there we go. So now, oop, he was there, he just stuck onto him. Come on, squish in there. Squish in there. There we go. Now he's all the way at the bottom. Oop. There, perfect. And now we take our um, barrel over here. The flat part, the part that sticks out, stays on top. All right, just like that. Done. So he is in. Now, we have our little pin. The bullet part goes in. Okay, so if you notice this bullet, this is sort of like uh, um, beveled, for lack of a better term. 
bullet part goes in just like that okay next we put on the shaft as for the shaft we need to make sure that there is no grease on those threads okay so we're going to take a little bit of paper towel put some alcohol on it and basically make sure that those threads are clean of all grease because we have to put loctite on it okay there we go so now make sure your shaft is sticking out about that much let's say a good inch right and we're going to take a little bit of Loctite. We're going to put, just put a drop on the threads. Make sure I'm in frame. Just like that. Okay. You can tap it or blow on it to make sure it sinks in there. All the way around. See, when you blow on it, it sort of sinks in them and spreads around more even. That's actually a little bit too much Loctite, in my opinion. And it takes them off. Okay. So. We have the bearing, we have the front of the shock. We need to make sure that the bearing faces the front of the shock, all right? So just like that. So we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna put him in, slide him down, and then start screwing this guy in. All right, and then we're gonna put him on the vise. Him as far as you can by hand first. Oop, I just bottomed out. And we need to torque him when he's on the vise. We are in the nine millimeter shaft of the um, soft jaw. Put on the trunnion mount, screwed it down by hand as far as I could take it. And then I'm gonna take my um, torque wrench, 9.6 newton meters, put it in there. Always remember, grab a torque wrench by the back of the handle here, right? Just like that. And we're gonna turn him to make sure he's not spinning underneath. Yep, he's spinning. Gotta tighten it down a little bit more. There we go. 9.63. We are good. And that takes care of the shock head. Now, time to reassemble the internal assembly. Now to start putting in all the internals, okay? So first of all, we have to make sure that this pin goes inside this notch over here. And I'm sure you're like, Zoobs, how do I do that? I can't see a thing, right? Well, young patty ones, we have a trick. Not really a trick, this house design. Ta-da! Get a magnet. Now you will see that little hole. We put it in and we make sure that this guy, there it is, is sitting right on it. See the pin right there? Boom, we are good to go. Then we take this shim over here, we tuck it in, we put in our wave washer, okay? I don't know a way to put it in, I mean, it's all the same, but we need to make sure the wave washer gets tucked in underneath. So, well, just like that, in this case, it tucked in on its own. Did it? Yeah, it did. Still, try and make sure it fits in the whole way around, just like that. There we go. Good. Okay. Then we take our clip and we fit them into a seat. There we go. Boom. Done. That part is done. So next we take our washer. We take our bumper. A new one, remember we replaced all these seals and everything to prep them. We take the air can piston, put this guy in. He might be a little bit stiff. In fact, what you can do is put a little bit of grease on the shaft. All right, and a little bit on here and slide him in. Come on, might be a little bit stiff. There we go. All right. Next, we take our piston assembly. Now we have two options over here. We can change the um, nylon ring over here now by removing everything and then inserting everything part by part, or we could put it on and then change it. 
Doing it from bottom up is a little bit easier than from top down, right? Um, in all reality, it's all the same. It's not all that different. So uh, I'm just going to do them the way we normally do them without, or I normally do them without having to take apart the piston assembly, right? But we did check our shims. Everything looks like it's in working order. Nothing seems damaged. So what we are going to do now is make sure everything's tucked into each other just like that, okay? Now this is the screw part that goes in here. We need to clean any grease from in there. Make sure any of that grease or make sure any potential grease is gone. Okay. A nice tight seal here. Do it one more time. Stick a little egg in there or a paper towel. Spin it around so it covers the threads. And we are good. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take little plier. We're going to open that up. Fortunately, again, this is too big, so <laughs> this is pretty rare for me, actually. It never really happened, so it'll be interesting to see how all this comes down now. i got to be very careful. In, in your case, if you used a small enough um, tie wrap, it shouldn't get jammed like mine is. Wow, this is the first. Literally a first. I've never had this jam like that. Okay, let me take this out. Come on. Boy, that is literally just a little bit too big. So what I'm going to do, start screwing it in like that, which is pretty much the normal process, but usually with a smaller tie wrap, it'll sink in deeper and it's much safer. All right. So as you can see, it's screwing in. Let me cut the top. Here's my little trick over here. Cut the top over here and we take this guy here, slide him through the tie wrap, and that should make your life more comfortable. All right, tighten them down by hand. Make sure there's no shims in there. Like I said, it's pretty rare. And then we have to torque this guy down. Now we're gonna take our special socket here and be careful with the shim, and we're gonna torque him down to 6.8 Newton meters. Done. There we go. Make sure there's no shim stuck inside. He is done. Now we're going to take this guy here, put him on top by hand. Always by hand first. And him, we're going to torque him down to 2.5 newton meters. Okay. Should have had this prep before. Well, technically I couldn't, 2.5. There we go. Perfect. Cool. Don't ever take this pin out, by the way. I probably should have mentioned that before. Never take this pin out. Leave that in there. Okay, next we're gonna change out the Teflon ring, right? Now, this is a little bit tricky. Basically, we have to get underneath it. If you squeeze it, sometimes it'll give you some space to put in a pick. And then you have to wedge it in there and basically stretch it out more than anything. This, sometimes you just might have to cut it. Okay. Okay, just like that. So one thing to note is that different, so I took the whole thing up straight up and if you notice this one, these are different. They're not the same across all shocks. If you notice this one, it's sort of concave over here. It has a thicker part on the bottom and a thinner part on top. So we have to remember that, right? So when it comes to replacing it, here's the new one. Wow, this one's flat. Why is this one flat? Well, that's weird. Did they change it? Huh. That is really odd. Okay. Well, this one's flat. The replacement in this kit, which is for this shock, is flat. So, 
like I said, they're different for different shocks. Maybe they changed it for this guy and they don't use a round one anymore, right? So now this is a little bit tricky. He's gonna stretch a bit, but we can put him, uh, shrink him down prior to closing the whole thing up. Just make sure he doesn't flip on you just like that. Okay, so perfect. Okay, I mean, that's a bit of an anomaly, but who knows? Okay, so now our head is done. Next up, we fill this guy with oil, close him up, fill him up with oil, and get ready to close the system. Okay, so first things first, we need to put in the new pellet. This is a new pellet from the new kit, right? You have a flat side and a beveled side. Flat side stays up, beveled side goes in. That is very important, okay? So put that guy in. Then we take our air screw, or pellet retaining screw, all right, hollow side obviously, or the screw side stays up. And we grab our 530 seconds. And we screw him down. Don't jam him down there, just tight enough, okay? And we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna put him in our vise. I recommend using metal vices on this one because the softer vices, or at least the poly ones, there's going to be a significant amount of torque twisting this whole damper and it could twist the twist into the poly vice uh, soft jaws. So I recommend uh, aluminum soft jaws for this, right? So now we fill up with 10 weight oil, 10 weight green, fill up the tube. Actually, I'm a bonehead. Let's take a hole in a towel and put it over and tuck it in order to help us catch any oil that spills over. Okay, let's tuck it into the vise just like that. Good. Now we fill it up. All right. Now there's air bubbles. We cannot close this thing until all those are gone. Let them all pop up and then we'll sort of wipe them off, okay? Now, when it comes to the head, we wanna fill up this shaft, all the holes in here, this mechanism with oil, the shaft with oil, as much oil, and all fill up this whole thing with oil, right? Now, the problem is we have a bleed hole. As we're filling this up, we need to hold or cover the bleed hole with our fingers, okay? So this is what's gonna happen. We're gonna cover with a bleed hole with our fingers. We're gonna fill this up with oil. We're gonna let the oil sink in. Then we're gonna fill it up a little bit more until you see there's no oil sinking in, right? Then, when it's all filled, we're gonna take our lifting plate, we're gonna put them in, and just make sure that this hole aligns with that pin, okay? And then, when that's all in, we're gonna take this guy and we are going to roll him as quick as we can, put him inside, roll him inside and twist and start closing him, okay? These bubbles are no good. We want all those bubbles gone. So what I'm gonna do is essentially wipe them off. Just like that. And we're gonna add in a little bit more oil, let some more bubbles come up. In fact, we could, be careful. Is any bubbles down there? You could use your oil pan, put it underneath to catch any oil that might spill over. So we got oil or bubbles in that. Again, we want all these bubbles gone. There's still bubbles in it. I can see it. I'm gonna let that sit there for a bit. Okay, so before we continue, I highly recommend getting everything in order, right? Have your wrench ready, 19 millimeter or three quarters. Have your crow's foot ready on your, uh, on your torque wrench. 90 degree angle for a, toes, for a crow's foot. I forget that quite often. So it's 90 degree angle on a crow's foot. Remember that. Make sure you have your magnet with your bearing and your screw ready, plus your uh, 564 Allen key ready. Okay, so again, what we're gonna do is we are going to, we already filled this guy up. He's been airing out. There's no more air that I could see, right? So next we're gonna fill this guy up over here. We're gonna fill this guy up with oil, but we need to make sure that we are, have our finger on the bleed hole, okay? So whatever is your more comfortable hand. So make sure the bleed hole is covered. Then we're gonna take them, we're gonna fill them up. Fill 
fill them up, fill them up, fill them up, fill them up, fill them up. Okay, it's okay if some oil comes out. Inevitable with these inline shocks, unlike piggybacks. Piggybacks, you could bleed them without barely dropping any oil. These guys here, you need overfill to know you did it right. Let's tuck some stuff down here. See, oil's going in. Do it one more time. The whole idea we want as much oil in the system as possible. Just do not let go of that bleed hole. Okay, so now take this guy, align the hole on the blade with the pin. Make sure he goes in, press down on the middle like that, sticking out just like that, okay? Now let's fill them up one last time. And we're gonna take them and we're gonna roll them, put them in and screw him down. And then grab our wrench first and we have to be careful with the bleed hole. Locate the bleed hole and make sure you don't Right, slip out of my hand. So the bleed hole's here, so I don't want to put pressure here. I want to put it here. Okay, so let's do them by wrench first. There we go. He is locked down. And then torque wrench, 27 Newton meters. I should have said that before. Sorry about that. So now our bleed hole is on this side. So we want to be here. Okay. 27. There we go. Next, our bleed hole again was on this side. I want to put our bearing in. I know you guys can't see it, but what am I going to do? I can't control the way it screws in. So I put the bearing in and then screw in the bleed. Don't tell me the bleed screw just fell. Where did it fall? Oh, it's right next to it. Okay, it's a bit ang odd angle for me. Screw in the bleed screw by hand if you can at first just to get it in there. There we go. Now we take our five sixty fourths and we screw him in just like that. I'm betting you guys can't see this but you're just screwing in a screw. Okay, finger tight, and done. We are filled with oil. Next up, we fill her up with air. Time to fill her up with air. So we need to put in 500 PSI into this guy. So you will absolutely need a high pressure shock pump, right? So uh, you'll also need um, nitrogen needle system so to attach to the shock pump. So again, two ways we could do this. One, you could buy the tool, make your own tool, um, that has a hole in the middle that allows you to insert this and open and close as you're inserting air. So, uh, while you're inserting air, I should say, or you can make your own tool. Like I said, at first I'd grind it. This works. It works real well, actually. Uh, take a Dremel, grind a slot down to the middle, it allows you to put the needle and then it's basically the same thing. But if you do it this way, it gives you less leverage. If you grind a slot this way, then you'll have more play. It'll be a lot easier. You won't be, the needle won't be in your way, basically. So I should have done that from the beginning, way back when. I never thought about it until recently. So you can do the same thing, just grind it down. So get a short and a long, and essentially just grind a slot right down the middle, okay? But I'm gonna use this tool over here. So the way this tool works is first, I'm gonna take this guy, and make sure he is tight to a certain point, okay? Right there, actually, it works out perfect. Now, you wanna make sure to make your life easier, you want to make sure that everything aligns, right? So if, for instance, this guy doesn't align sideways, just hold the head, twist the bottom until he aligns nicely. And this way, it'll all be um, basically aligned, making your life a lot easier, right? So now I'm going to take this guy and put him in here. Okay, just like that. So be very careful with this needle. Again, this is a surgical, 22 gauge surgical needle. He will go right through you. You will not even realize it, okay? So take the cap off this guy. So now we put him in through the pellet. If he's too tight, if he doesn't go in smoothly, 
basically loosen the pellet. All this guy's doing, all this screw is doing is putting tension on the pellet and squeezing it together, okay? So once we take off some of that tension, we should be able to just slide that guy in and then close them up a little bit. Don't close them up too much, okay? So now you have two options. You could tape this down if you want so he doesn't bounce around, but this system over here, he doesn't bounce around as much and basically put a towel underneath to, you know, just make it quieter overall, right? So now we basically lift them up to five or inflate them to 500 PSI. Now the gauge is facing me, I can see it. Okay, it's gonna start getting really hard after 350, hence why using the table as leverage is great. All right, so 400, and it's not going past 400 because he's leaking here. Let's tighten him a little bit. There he goes. Nope, still leaking. Let's tighten him a little bit more. Okay. So basically this tells me I have a problem. Let's tighten him one more time and give him a shot. Nope. So I have a bad needle. I need to change out my needle. So that sucks. So basically be careful removing him, loosen him. All right, air is going to come out. There we go. So that tells me that this needle head is bad. Again, this is put together with epoxy and when they get used too many times, they start going bad basically. So I got to change this head out. I will be back. I'm going to record this so you could avoid doing the same mistake that I did a long time ago where this needle went right through the middle of this finger. How it didn't get stuck in my bone, I have no idea. So basically grab a plier, loosen the head. All right. When this thing comes loose, take it off, put it down. Now, do not try and remove this with your hand. There's a, this thing's going to be in there pretty tight. And basically, it could slip off, and then your hand will just naturally come back down, potentially, right? So use the plier and just take it out and put this guy on the side. Then we have new needles. Take the needle. Again, look how stiff he is in there, right? Take a plier and basically lightly remove them, just like that. Put the needle over, then put the cap on. I know this seems trivial, but I don't want you guys running into the same issue I did a long time ago. Okay, then we tighten them down. All right, we have a new needle. Take this old cap, cover the needle, put them on the side. This is the new cap, we'll leave them on the side for now. Okay, so back to the job. Okay, just like that. Loosen them a little bit. Let's put this guy in. There we go. Now let's try this again. Yep. And we are at 500. So now, pull them up. That came out of here, did not come out of here. And tighten them down. And you are good. All that air you heard come out, that slipped out of my hands. All that air you heard come out, came out of the needle over here. So, we are good. Next, we test them on the dyno. Yay! All right, we are on the dyno. Now let's test it out. First, rebound fully open and compression over here. We don't have a choice. By default, it is fully open. Silent. Nice and silent. Let's take the rebound and shut it all the way. It's actually a lot of rebound. And whoo, that's not going anywhere. Let's open it up. Oh yeah, rebound is working and working beautifully. Now let's leave the rebound all the way and let's test compression. This is a remote, so we don't have a cable. We're going to have to manually do it. So let's go to mid, full, mid. Yep, definitely feel some tension. And then fully locked, oof, locked out. It's not even a millimeter. I mean, this thing does not budge a fraction of a millimeter. So that is working perfectly. So let's try halfway. 
give or take. Nope, definitely slower. Let's try this halfway. All right, and wow, lockout is fully locked out. She is working beautifully. That is awesome. And she's completely silent. Nicely bled. Dial's working beautifully and completely, completely locked out when in the lockout mode. Let's try one more time. Put the rebound all the way. Actually, yeah, let's do that. Put the rebound. Actually, <laughs> it's funny. It actually the rebound's working really well. Okay, rebound's fully open. Where are you? There you are. Wow, she's locked out big time. And one last time. All the way down. Rebound is. Look at that. Boom, 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 boom. Awesome. The damper is done. Now let's finish the air can. So now on to the air can service. All right. So I opened up the kit, the air can kit. Basically, I separated all the seals for the inside, which are these three over here, and the seals for the air can itself, which are on the well, on the outside, basically, right? So these guys over here. So first, well, let's start off with these guys. It's a little bit easier and quicker. First, we're going to take out a split ring. All right. Old split ring, new split ring. Let's take out the other split ring. Old, new. And then we take out quad ring. Be careful when taking out the quad ring. Just bring it over the edge like that. All right. So that's our old ones. Grab a little bit of cloth, clean seat. Okay, now we have our pillow pack, or float fluid, right? We're gonna put some on the inside over here, just coat it real well. And then we're gonna coat the quad ring. All right. Put that all the way around. Take the quad ring, put it on there, make sure it doesn't twist when you put it on. There we go. Then a little coat of the float fluid on the split ring. Make sure the split rings sit on top of each other, just like that, okay? Not the other way around. So, and then put another little bit of a coat on the other split ring, and this one goes in the front. Again, be careful as far as how the split ring sit. You want it to sit just like that. All right, that guy's done. Easy cheesy. Next, let's take out our wiper. Okay, not too dirty. Wiper goes here. This is our old, our new sag ring, the old one I put it on the side. Then we're gonna go inside. We're gonna grab our quad ring, stab it and pull it out. And frame, yes. Okay, come on. What the? There we go. All right, it's the old one. Then grab our seals, again, stab them, pull them out, one out. Watch you don't scratch the walls, two out. Boom, boom. Now, that's all our old stuff. Now we gotta go in here and clean them real well. Okay, this guy looks relatively clean. He just had a 50 hour service not too long ago. Okay. Make sure the seat on the inside is clean. All right. Fold them, put them on the seat. Just two seats on the inside, one for the wiper, the other one for the rings. Make sure you fold the towel in both of them because dirt could hide in there and you don't want any dirt to go inside the canister, that's for sure. All right, another area where you want to clean is at the bottom in here. It sort of dips down, so that could be somewhat deceiving. All right, just put your finger all the way down. And we are good. Okay. <laughs> this guy is clean. No seal on the outside. Grab a little bit of float fluid. Put it 
on our quad ring. Actually, I should have done this seal first. I thought I was doing this stuff again. I'm gonna put this guy on the side. Let's do this seal. Coat him just a little bit. Now, these guys are a little bit tricky. The first one's easy. Take them, tuck them in, and the rest will follow. You're gonna have to bend them a little bit. Don't over bend them. Just like that. And again, he goes into the second seat, right? The first seat over here is for the wiper. The second seat inside, that is for the seals. So now we take our quad ring and it's gonna go in front of that white seal towards the outside. So again, tuck them in front, just like that. And the rest will follow. Make sure he's not twisted. He's in. Oh man, tell me they're going. Mm -hmm. Too much contrast. Did I put him in the right one? Yes, I did. He's in the right one. Okay, good. He is in. Now let's take the last one. Put a little bit of the float fluid on him. This guy's going to be the trickier one. We got to take him and stick him in front of the quad ring now. Now again, this is going to be a little bit tricky. So first, you got to find space in front of the quad ring. Right, so that's our quad ring. And we need to sink this guy in. Grab corner of him. And basically, there we go. There goes that one. Uh, and I just lost um, him. But I said this guy will be tricky. Him. Him. Do. Do. Uh -huh. I don't like being that close to the shock, but that's where the camera is. Nope, wrong seat. Okay, got him. That's it, got inside. There he goes. That part done. Sometimes it's harder doing this for the camera because everything's so far from your body and when you use your body as leverage, Sometimes it goes a lot smoother. Now, he's going to wave a bit just like that. That's normal. Don't be too freaked out about it. Just make sure he doesn't go into a 90 degree angle or anything. And he will tuck in just like, come on, get in there. Just like that. All right. And we are in. All right. He's clean. Everything looks clean. Make, make sure. Your quad ring is not twisted, and the seals are in. So now we take float fluid. Cover this guy real well with float fluid. Float fluid, your friend over here. Put some on this axle here too. Make sure you get this guy real good, All right? And then make sure you get these guys in here. Put some float fluid on them. Then we're gonna put in our wiper. In your hands, we don't want grease on the wiper. This guy should go in real easy, just like that. And boom, wiper is in. All right, so now we're gonna take some float fluid, put them inside. They have a whole bunch of drops, about a quarter of this thing. Move them around. Okay, it's not here. All right. Then we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna drop him just like that. I just wanted to clean my hands. Okay, little camera mishap. Not sure what uh, we lost, but we put grease on this guy over here. We put a little bit of grease on the shaft, put grease on the inside here, put some well, flu fluid, put a little bit on the edge over here, right? Just around these seals here. Okay, so. Let's make sure we got enough that never hurts over here. Okay, so then we take this guy, take him and put him in. Come on. There we go. Now he's in. Grab a dry towel, put him in, and then this can be a little bit tricky. There we go. Oh, come on. Come on, man. Oh, that stupid sticker's coming off. I hate that when that happens. Come on. 
All right, and he's tied on. Okay. Okay. Oop. That I'm going to have to fix. I do not want to lose that sticker. I wish Fox would come up with something better, like maybe laser engraving or something. Now, let's grab our strap wrench and give it just a little tug. Nothing too hard, really. You don't need to put this guy too tight, just a little snug. Just like that. That's it. Cool, Delrin ball. As for the Delrin ball, aluminum flat jaws. Take the ball, put them in. Make sure when you pinch or when you shut the jaws that it's parallel and that you don't touch the body of the barrel or the body of the damper. Just sink it in just like that and done. She is in. All we need to do now is fill them up with air. So now we put in our eyelets. Okay. Put the axle through. Grab, so this side, uh, yeah, you got the flat side. Now if I didn't know better, I'd say there should have been washers in here, but maybe not. Oop, you don't want to trap your finger in there or your glove. Then grab this side here. Yep, it goes just like that. That is done. And then we have our sag ring. All right. And we are done. Here you have it. A fully 100% serviced Fox Nude DPS Extra Vol. I got to fix this sticker. Be careful with the stickers. You don't want to lose these... Um, 290 stickers. So sometimes they just come off with the slightest rub. Um, so yeah, full service. Again, a little bit different than a typical DPS, only because of the top over here, right? Remote controls would be similar to a DPS uh, if you had a DPS room with remote controls, but it's that, that chamber that they have in here for Scott Bikes that makes this different. All right. So Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully this helps you out. If you like the video, please press like. That would be very much appreciated. If you did, if you don't like the video, just give it the finger. Um, if you want to see more videos, click the subscribe button. If you want to get warned or uh, informed on videos that have been uh, released, uh, click the bell. Bing, 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 bing. And uh, you will know when they come out. Outside of that, hope all is well with everyone. And we will talk to you soon in more videos. All right. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.